are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our second segment. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read in the air, please use the link, gsmcpodcast.net. really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get into our second segment of the day here. Now, before we do that, to start, I would like to mention some more stuff I found about Cody Bellinger. That was something that did break in the air, so I just want to talk about it. So it is unclear when he will return from the fractured rib, so we do know that. But overall, I think it, is, it does suck for Bellinger as he was just starting to get hot at the plate. And the Cubs have been really impressive so far, and losing, again, one of their hotter hitters is unfortunate. But it's really nice for Pico Armstrong to get an opportunity in the major leagues now. You know, lost a lot of opportunity once they did re-sign Bellinger, so I think it's really good for him that he does get another opportunity and does get to start every day at center field now, it seems like. So that is good, but, you know, you always don't want to lose a guy of the caliber of Bellinger. Really, really good players, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to go to our second segment now, of course, which is American League games. We just talked about the National League, so only fitting to go to the American League. So yeah, let's start it off. Starting off with the Guardians and the Red Sox, of course, two really two really exciting teams so far this season, two teams that have outperformed expectations, so let's get into it. Top of the seventh, William Abreu would open up the, the long, score, long, long scoreless game with his second home run of the year to make it one nothing Boston. Bottom of the seventh, Tyler Freeman would hit an RBI single to make it one to one and O'Brien Rokikio, uh, sacrifice fly to make a 2-1 to Cleveland in the bottom of the seventh. Then a Jose Ramirez solo home run and an Esteban Villarreal RBI double would make it 4-1, to and the Red Sox would not score after that, making it a 4-1 to game for the Guardians and a 4-1 to win. So a really nice job there by the Guardians. Just keep on moving for this year. My third segment is about them, of course, so I'm not going to go too deep into their season, but I will in the third segment. So if you're a Guardians fan or you're just interested in why they've been doing so well, I'll update you on that. The Guardians had on the mound Ben Lively, who was really good. Six innings, six and a third innings pitch, giving up one earned run, no walk, seven strikeouts. Really, really solid. Just a great game for him. The Red Sox, they had on the mound Tanner Houck, who also was really solid, even though he did get the loss. Six innings pitched, five hits, two run runs, three walks, four strikeouts. Really great start there. Offense just let him down, kind of got to Grommed, quote unquote. You know, when you when you pitch a great start and your offense doesn't do anything for you, so unfortunate there. But still a really good start by him, and nice job trying to stake his claim as uh, part of the future of the Red Sox rotation. Next game we have is Tigers and Rays. Top of the third, scoring an open up with a Riley Green solo home run, his fourth of the year to make it one nothing. Then an Isaac Paredes two run home run in the bottom of the six would give the Rays the lead, making it two to one. Top of the eighth, Riley Green would come in clutch again with his fifth home run of the year and his second of the game to make it three to two Tampa. And then a Mark Canish solo shot would make it four to two t- Detroit, and they would end up winning the game. I think I said Tampa before I meant to say three two Detroit. Obviously, Riley Green is on the Tigers, so four to two Detroit, and they would end up winning that game. So a really nice job by Riley Green and Mark Canna, two of the better outfielders coming in clutch. Tigers had on the mound Kent Maeda was solid five innings pitched three hits no one runs no walks five strikeouts has had a pretty rough start to the season as a tiger so far hopefully he can you know get it back up and get back to the Kenta Maeda we all know of so hopefully this start was a step in the right direction for the Rays they had Ryan Pepio on the mound six innings pitched three hits an earned run two walks four strikeouts 377 ERA so really strong start there again I've said it multiple times and very high in him I think it was a great job by the race to get him back in that Tyler the glass now trade that we all knew was coming. So really good start there. Next game we have here is Athletics and Yankees. Yankees looking to bounce back after that rough loss in the first game of the series to the A's. Top of the first, scoring would open up with a Seth Brown RBI double uh, to make it one nothing A's. But Giancarlo Stanton would answer right back in the bottom of the first with a two RBI double, scoring Juan Soto and Aaron Judge to make it two to one New York. Then an Anthony Rizzo two run home run to make it four to one New York. Really great job by Rizzo there. Has been struggling very publicly so far, so a really nice job there to kind of get back on track and hit that home run. Top of the second, top of the second though, Shane Langoliers would hit a solo home run to answer back a little bit, make it a four to two, and then the rookie Lawrence Butler would come in clutch with a solo home run to make a 3-2 to two New York. But the A's would not score after that, coming back down to earth and being the A's, and they would end up losing 4-3 to three to the Yankees. So a nice win there by the Yankees. They had on the mound Marcus Stroman, who went five and a third innings pitch, giving up seven hits, three earned runs, a walk, and nine strikeouts. 
Really great start there. Has been really, really solid since coming to the Yankees. I think, like myself and a lot of other people, I think we're very skeptical of the Stroman signing, but he's been really, really well and put his past behavior about the Yankees behind him. So really good job there for him. For the A's, they had Paul Blackburn on the mound, who was, eh, he was just eh. Six innings pitched, five hits, four on runs, no walks, five strikeouts, but still a 2.03 ERA on the season. I think Blackburn is going to be one of the most sought-after players at the trade deadline. Just a really solid veteran starter with control. A lot of teams could be interested in him. So I think every single good start that he has is uh, another prospect here. The, the A's go up to get a guy to get someone for Blackburn. So it's been really good for a year, almost a year and a half now. So I'm looking at Blackburn as one of the real guys. I think is going to get a lot at the trade deadline, and a lot of teams need pitching like always, especially this year with all the injuries. So I'll be watching him and seeing if he does get a haul like I think he will. Next game we have is the Blue Jays and Royals matchup of two blue teams. Top of the third, Justin Turner would hit an RBI single to score George Springer to make it 1-0 Toronto. Then a Alejandro Kirk sacrifice fly in the top of the fifth would make it 2-0. A Cal Isbell, uh, sorry, I framed that wrong. Cal Isbell would reach on an error to make it 2-1. And then a Bobby Witt Jr. RBI double would make it 3-2 Kansas City. And they would end up winning that game kind of rather quickly. I mean, uh, Blue Jays scored, uh, Royals came right back, and then the game would end. So no no scoring after the fifth. So kind of an interesting game there, but good to win by the Royals. Keep going on this really great season they've had so far. They had on the mound Michael Walker, who was okay. Only four and a third innings pitched, eight hits, two run runs, three walks, four strikeouts. Kind of interesting that it didn't go that deep into the game. I'm not sure if there's a medical issue there or just the, the Royals wanted to pull him quickly. So I'll look into that quickly, and I'll see if that is a thing. But I don't think so. It seems like they just wanted to pull him. If probably a situation where he did get pulled that early. So uh, hoping there's nothing there. But uh, just looks like they pulled him early uh, for once. The Blue Jays had on the mound Kevin Gosman. He went six and two thirds innings pitched, seven hits, three runs, none earned, one walk, and two strikeouts. So the errors for the Blue Jays really killed him. But for himself, just six innings pitched, no one runs against this nice Royals offense. Good start for him and continue to be the ace that we know of. Again, had a rough start to the season coming back from that injury, but overall, I think, has been really, really good. So, yeah, uh, good job there, and, uh, yeah, good start for him. Next game we have on the agenda here is going to be White Sox and Twins, a battle of AL Central teams, of course. Bottom of the first, Max Kepler would open up the scoring for the for the Twins with a RBI single to make it one nothing. Then Eloy Jimenez would answer back with a three run home run, his second of the year, to make it three to one. Chicago, of course, I just said that, but I mean, really nice job by Jimenez. There has really been struggling this year, so good good uh, good hit there and good home run to come in clutch for the White Sox. Bottom of the seventh, Carlos Santana would get the Twins within a run with a RBI double to make it three two, and then. Uh, the White Sox would get some more insurance runs, though, with a Andrew Benintendi RBI single to make it 5-2 Chicago. A Trevor Larnick two-run home run to make, would make it 5-4, and then the big blow would come in the bottom of the ninth with a Byron Buxton solo home run to tie up the game at 5-5 for the Twins. And then an Alex Kirilov RBI single would win the game for the Twins, making it 6-5, walking it off for them. So really, really nice win for the Twins there. With all the bad vibes they've had to start the season, I think a walk-off like this and a comeback like that can really ignite your team and really you know, make you do well in the future. So watching that, a great job there. The Twins had on the mound Pablo Lopez, who was decent. Four innings pitched, four hits, three earned runs, two walks, six strikeouts. Definitely not what you want, but not horrible as well. So I think against an offense like the White Sox, you need to be better. But I, I think I'm pretty confident in Lopez becoming better for the season. The White Sox had on the mound Eric Fetty. He went six innings pitched, giving up three hits and earned run. No walks and 11 strikeouts. A great start for him. Has been really, really great since coming over to the U.S. again and going to the White Sox. I thought he was one of the most underrated. I thought he was one of the most underrated players in baseball after coming over from that contract. I thought that contract was really, really good. Was a very undervalued free agent. So being proven right so far, which is pretty nice. And yeah, I just I loved that contract. I really did. Next game we have is Mariners and Rangers. Top of the first, the scoring would open up with Cal Raleigh, sixth home run of the year to make it 2 nothing. Then on the top of the third, Julio Rodriguez would finally, finally hit his first home run of the year. Has really been struggling so far, but getting that first home run 
on the board is nice, takes a lot of stress off your back, you know, and now you can just go play baseball, not having to worry about it. He was one of several players to not have a home run of the year, and he kind of stuck out like a sore he kind of stuck out like a sore thumb on that list. You know, he's really the only big star there, so a really jo- great job by there to again get that home run on the board, kind of erase that from his brain and, you know, just get back to playing baseball now, you know, okay, that's done. I can go back to being myself. So Nice win by the Mariners here. Pitching really kept the Rangers, dangerous Rangers offense in track. Logan Gilbert was phenomenal. Six and two-thirds innings pitch, two hits, no one runs, four walks, six strikeouts. Has really, really been great to start the season so far. Really has been impressive. For the Rangers, they had Dane Dunning. He went four and a third innings pitch, giving a four hits, four and runs, three walks, seven strikeouts. Just okay. I think you need him to do better, but not horrible. The final game we have for the American League slate of yesterday is going to be Orioles and Angels. Scoring would open up in the top of the first with a Mike Trout leadoff home run, his ninth of the year to make it 1-0. Then a Luis Renjifo RBI double and a Zach Neto RBI single in the top bottom of the second would get the Angels out to an early 3-0 lead. Then a Logan Ohapi RBI double and a Joe Adele RBI single in the bottom of the third make it 5-0. And a Zach Neto RBI double and a Nolan Shanuel RBI single in the bottom of the fourth make it 7-1 Angels already in the bottom of the fourth. Orioles offense looked like it was dead at this point, and the Angels were just flying by. But the Orioles would attempt to come back a little bit with a Gunnar Henderson sacrifice fly in the top of the fifth and a Ryan O'Hearn RBI double to make it 7-3. to three. Then Gunnar Henderson would hit his seventh home run of the year, a solo shot in the top of the seventh, ironically, to make it 7-4. to four. But the Orioles would not come back after that, would not score, and the Angels ended up winning this game against the Orioles 7-4. to four. A Really, really strong game for the Angels there, beating this good Orioles team. Congrats to them. The Orioles had on the mound Grayson Rodriguez, who was not his usual good self. Four and a third innings pitch, giving up 11 hits, seven earned runs, one walk, and seven strikeouts. 4-4-5 four, four, ERA on the season. Not really what you want. For the Angels, they had on the mound Griffin Canning. He went five innings pitched, five hits, three earned runs, two walks, four strikeouts. 7-6 seven, ERA on the season. Not great. An okay start, but still not a great overall season for him. So definitely not what you want, but not horrible anyways. So, yeah. Um, those are the games from yesterday, both the American League and the National League. Both are have been recapped now. So, yeah, that is it. We'll be going into our third segment, which is talking about the Guardians and their impressive start to the season. They are currently the best team in the league somehow. So, just be talking about that. Do I think it's sustainable? My overall thoughts on it, all that. So, yeah, we'll talk about that. But first, we'll see you after the break. So, thanks and bye. <laughs> 